you encounter a ghost, like a full apparition, Mm -hmm. what should you do? It depends on what you want to do. And we've heard a thousand different stories. So some people will just go, oh yeah, it's okay, fair enough, and be done with it. Some people would be screaming their heads off and going, oh my God, this is the first time I've ever had anything like this. I don't even know where to go and watch you. I hear them chats in the noise, mood too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear them chat with the boys, man so tough, but minds keep walking. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cancer Me Now podcast. i got no idea what episode this is. I think it's like 15 or 16. It's very exciting. Oh yes. Oh yes indeed. Now we have a cast of thousands on this podcast. We have little Dixon with us, um, my beautiful fiance. How are you doing, love? Hello, darling. Hello. Um, and it's great to have you here on the show. Lots of little Dicky fans out and about. I'm very all over nervous. The- I haven't done a podcast before, you except have. Morgan's. You've done a couple of podcasts. Have I? I think so. You did. I've been. Um, I've been in the background. Yes, talking yes. shit as usual. Good. Yeah, you now you're a good in the background. The Thank other week you. in a podcast talking mad shit about people. It's good yeah. fun. And we have the ghost grannies here, Anna Renata. Hello, um, hello. Woo! How are we all? Um, now, let's talk about something important because this podcast is going to be oh, yes. all about our adventures, the paranormal. We also have a documentary coming out this week tomorrow night. In oh, fact, oh, uh, where we I'm go excited. into the depths of a haunted. Demon Tunnel. So the story that seems to be perpetuated is of a homeless man who was murdered inside the tunnel. I don't feel safe. (laughs) He's coming for you. Someone is watching from over here. It's like watching a horror movie. It is, but you're in it. Is there anyone in here? (gasps) Oh. Oh, there we go. Jesus. There was supposedly satanic worship that has taken place in this tunnel. Were you murdered here? A way to open the portal is to say the Lord's Prayer backwards. No, I'm not doing it. This is too far. Yes, that's right. Uh, So go and check that out. Um, uh, What's what's the show name? Um, Devil's Advocate is back. I always fucking forget it. (laughs) I always forget what it's called, but it's a good show. Uh, you should check it out. Um, Jesus Christ. Now, let's talk. We've, we've spoken about this a lot um, before, the name, the ghost grannies. Yes. Well, some of us have spoken a lot about it. Not me. <laughs> no. Well, never mind. Now, no. I, I'm pretty good with marketing. Oh, managed oh to, yeah, we have noticed that. Unbelievable. <laughs> some of the best. Um, I think it's the best name this side of the Mississippi for you two. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes us stand out compared to so many ghost hunters that are yeah. out there. There are so many paranormal TV shows, ghost hunters, whatever. And None of them are funny, though. Yeah, Well, this is true. Well, this is true. true. None of them are funny. They None of them, are. no, and they're all full of shit. So, <laughs> And how many? <laughs> Did you just look at the camera and do that? <laughs> God, you turn, it in, you turn it into me. I learn, I learn from the best. That's yeah. horrifying. But how many of them are old, old ghost granny? See, I can do it too. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Like you guys, that's that's the point of difference. Yeah. Like you are both what sixty? Fuck you. <laughs> You're fucked. You're what going to hell. Oh. You're a grandma. I'm so glad what I did to you last time in that tunnel. <laughs> You, you're a grandma. I'm a grandma. That doesn't mean I'm 60. No. Christ, well, my grandma Can I have some 60. more of your products, please, Claire? <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. What do you need? What are you, 58 or something? Crude. I'm 56. You're 56? I thought you were a grandmother. Aren't all oh, grandmothers yeah, grandma. in their 60s? You're digging a hole, don't you? Oh, just 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 dig just away. Stop away. Dig away. Stop. Stop. <laughs> all right, well, stop. You, you were, you've been talking about the ghost grannies. Jeez, you must have been a young grandmother then. Don't you have heaps of grandkids? Uh, yeah, my daughter dis- did decide to have her first one at 21 and they chose to. It's mm. still not that no. young though. No. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Shout out about. to Hannah. She's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Claire's I mean, there's, there's some people who are grannies in their 30s, late 30s. And yeah, 40s. Their kids, yeah. kids are a bit of a... Bit of, bit of, bunch of sluts or something. Um, but no, I think the ghost granny's name and the monarch, I think that is the <laughs> that is the and here's the thing about being a, you're only getting older. And that's what I really <laughs> think. Just, and this is no, I'm serious. Stop right this now. is what we're worried about. Stop. Is we are getting older. Our time is short, so we need to make hey, why that sunshine. Yeah, you're fifty six, but Renata's got minutes oh, left. No. I'm, <laughs> 
I might, I might not even oh. last this episode. <laughs> oh, my God. Just give me more coffee. Right? They're I'll never going to be friends with us or do anything with us ever again. Now, I'd like to point out the elephant in the room that the fact is that I Please I'm, don't talk about I'm, my butt. <laughs> oh, I'm, you're a beautiful booty. I'm surrounded by three women. That's mm-hmm. right. That's and, right. And for a woman hater. Uh, I remember I was getting a bit of hate. Icy cold. I remember what I was getting a bit of hate online one day and people saying how much I hate women. And then I, at, at that exact point, I was doing a doco. Who likes women? Well, that's a, that's a fair point. Really? I was doing a doco with three women like just hang, in a car and I was thinking maybe, I don't know if that's 100% true. But, it's um, not true. No, but it's it's nice to be with you guys in here. Now, you're, you're travelling overseas. Is that no, correct? We are. What, we are. Do, what fingers, are you doing? You crossed. will be. You will be. Fingers so what's, what's going Tell on? Tell us everything. Well, we're heading to the UK first, and this is a trip that we were planning to do two and a half or two years ago, mm-hmm. and um, we finally put it back on again. Mm-hmm. And I was determined. I may have pushed a little early. Maybe April was too soon she to be came, heading out. She came too early. Oh, I was determined. Don't you hate it? I oh, know. <laughs> determined to have a moment. Uh, so yeah, we we decided we were going to do this road trip based on a map that Renata's daughter found. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Yes. Yep. And it was a map of naughty place names throughout the UK. I okay. remember, I remember this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to start in a little town called Shitterton. Oh. Yeah. And we were going to end up in Twat, but unfortunately Renata doesn't do watery passages, so oh. <laughs> there is no ferry boat oh, to Twat, twat uh, because she won't do it. Yeah, Twat's on the Orkney Islands and I'm not going. It's okay. a four-hour ferry. Oh, trip. yuck. So yeah. you guys yeah, no. are paranormal investigators. Why are you following the... Wouldn't you be following like haunted places? Well, not there are haunted places mm. there, but we wanted yeah. to go somewhere where a lot of people don't go. Yep, everyone goes to the the same old, same old places and reports from the same old places. Sure. Plus, we've got a fabulous following of people who just love watching us get ourselves into a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. Yes, we do. And <laughs> you know, that's, that's yeah. Claire's one of them. She loves yeah. watching your live streams on you. It's on uh, YouTube and Facebook at the moment, that's right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so yeah. where where can people find you if, if you're interested in checking you out? At the moment, we're on Anne and Renata Ghost Hunters okay. on uh, YouTube, and yeah. that's where you'll find our misadventures. We're calling it the the ghost hunting misadventures of Anne and Renata. But we're also on Facebook as well. Okay, uh, we do have TikTok and Instagram and, oh, wow. and all those other lovely things. We hate TikTok, but you know, we'll. we'll I don't like it. TikTok either. I don't, I don't understand it. it. Don't get it. I don't get it either. I did a course. I paid I, money to yeah. do a course, and I still don't get it. <laughs> There's you a TikTok money? course. I did. There is a TikTok. Course. Fuck me. It was twenty seven dollars. <laughs> Wasn't a lot. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Man. So, I, I want to get a bit of background about you guys because we, we've known you for a number of years. I've known Renata for more years than you, Anne, but I still don't know your story. And so, it feels like a lifetime. It is. Is, <laughs> that, is that an insult? <laughs> no, no, it means no. like we've been friends forever. Okay. It means you're comfortable with us. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. But, but. I want to know about you guys. So if you could, because there's a lot of people listening to this who don't know who you are. Can we can we give a bit of background into who you are and why you? What, what what brought you to this point? Oh, I'm going to knock the Christ. coffee over. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I'm just looking at your coffee, which looks like something died and vomited. <laughs> <or> something. <laughs> it's the almond milk. I'm sorry, darling. Bloody old Dixon. Isn't um, it nice? All right. So I I bad. had known Renata in the industry for about 11 years, maybe mm. longer. Uh, but uh, I used to have people say to me, Keep away from her. She's a bitch. Oh. Um, she has got a monopoly on all the haunted locations in the Hunter region and um, she won't share them with anyone. And, uh, yeah, she's just an absolute cow. So I, I took that on for a little while and I kept looking. I go, I don't think she's as bad as people make out. Saw her at a, a little bit of an expo thing and um, she sort of made the attempt to talk at me but spent most of the time hiding in a corner trying not to make eye contact with people, really. Smart move. She doesn't like people. No, who does? <laughs> uh, and I like dead people. Oh, yeah. Then I think I went on one of your tours and I went, oh, yeah, she's all right. She's all right. And uh, eventually uh, you rang me and asked me, because I was in a different team at that stage, um, she said, I I want to go to Sydney to the Australian Institute of Parapsychological Study and do this course. It's a whole day course. I don't want to go by myself. Would you like to come with me? Oh, so you reached out. That's she nice. did. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, no. Love story. Oh, I tried to poach her for ages, but yeah. um, it just kind of wasn't happening. So, oh. so that's that's beautiful how you met. Yeah, I don't really care about that. I want to know why <laughs> you guys. 
Uh, just cut that. Just cut it. No, no, <laughs> leave it in. It's very important to the story. Why are you ghost hunters? Ooh. Renata, where, what yeah. brought you? Tell me about your your childhood. How, how did you get involved in this? Great Is question. this something that you've always been a part of? Yes, it has. I've always had weird and wonderful experiences, mm-hmm. but being um, brought up in a very Catholic household, mm-hmm. um, the idea of actually saying anything about that or having it explained to you from some parents who really weren't interested at all and yep. who had suffered trauma through their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't something you talked about. You just went to church more often. Yes. Yep. So it yep. was about going to church more often and being a good Catholic child mm-hmm. and uh, doing some stuff that was associated with my own um, background, which is Polish, so mm-hmm. did a lot of Polish stuff. Um, but the more I did, the more I found out that there were um, many pagan roots and many um, festivals and things that amused me more and meant more to me than anything the Catholic religion could give me. So that was kind of my first thing of going, there's something really different here Mm -hmm. and I want to really explore that. And so the more and more I studied and the more and more I learned about all the pagan stuff that was going on in Europe, the more I thought, this this is me, this is where I sit. Makes more sense. And uh, when I got into my 20s, I thought I'm going to explore this a little bit more and I went into tarot Mm -hmm. and uh, I went and did some tarot classes and, again, I kind of felt as though this was something that I knew. I don't know how I knew it, but I knew it. Uh, And so uh, a few years after doing some study, I started doing um, professional tarot card reading and it kind of, it's one of those things where you open the door to that. There mm. are a whole lot of different things that start to come in and you want to learn a bit about this and a bit about this and a bit about this. And ghost hunting was kind of a little bit around our area in Newcastle, but very, very limited. So there are some mediums doing some work and going out to cemeteries and things like that. Um, but it was only when I went on uh, the first civic theatre ghost tour that was run by a woman from Sydney who came down from Sydney to do it and Mm -hmm. I'm standing there in a crowd of like 60 people and I'm looking around and going "Mm, this is really interesting and at that stage I was already in uh, and doing uh, I had a small um, like esoteric shop that I was part of there was a partnership going on there and I heard this little voice in my ear saying you can do this do you know that you can do this? And I've looked around and I'm going, who's saying that? <laughs> so there was actually someone that said to me, you should be doing this. Mm. And so I took that on board and uh, literally within a year, I think after that, um, I started to look at how I could run a ghost hunting business here in Newcastle. Right. Um, and so I did. From the ground up. From the ground up, yeah. So, wow. so you weren't one of these mediums who was seeing things as a child? I was. You were. I was, but it wasn't from do from having those experiences yourself, and then presenting them to uh, a crowd of people who are after so many different things. Uh, that's a completely different ball game. Yeah. And so you've got to learn the process of how you present, what you have to do, how do you uh, work the place itself, uh, and who does it belong to, and, and what do they want from you. So there are a whole lot of aspects that you have to go into before you sort of really get into it and are ready to step out. I mean, I still remember that first night I went out and did a ghost tour of, of Newcastle, and literally we were surrounded by friends. Um, who went on the first tour, I was so nervous. It was unbelievable. I, I was just, I was shitting bricks the whole mm. time. Yeah. So it's it's something different to put yourself out there yep. and go, okay, I'm, I'm ready to take this on as someone who can come and ask me questions and, um, you know, I know enough about the subject that I can answer them rather than go, oh, I don't know. Yeah. You know. And you don't want to do that when you're out presenting a ghost tour, no. you never want to be able to say, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a performance in many ways. It is. You know, you're doing public speaking. Yeah. But what was those experiences like as a child? You, What were you seeing? Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Can you remember the first time you saw something or was there something that Or sort heard of- something? Um, yeah. I, well, I was a child in the crib and uh, I was seeing um, dark shadows moving um, and threatening me. So it was all about fear, terror and threat. And so I'd wake up screaming 
and uh, my parents would run in and say, what's wrong? I'm having the bad dreams again, so it was bad dreams. Yep. Uh, and so I, I slept until I was um, in my mid-teens with the hall light on. I couldn't sleep in the dark. Um, but there were these continual dark, dark energies that were around. Um, I didn't classify them as something demonic, um, and maybe that's why I kind of don't really get into that side of things. Just a lack of light, so the, therefore you can't make out what they are. Yeah, it was just this threat, this horrible dark energy that was threatening. Now, you've got to remember that both my parents lived through World War II. Mm. My father was in a, a, um, an Air Force concentration camp in Germany and my mother was in Auschwitz. So they had trauma throughout wow. their lives and even when they come out to Australia, and I, I say this story to Anne, when um, my father was at work in the evenings and he used to do afternoon shift at one of the factories um, in Maitland and my mother was on her own looking after me, uh, if there was a thunderstorm outside, she would hide me under the kitchen sink because of the thunderstorm reminded her of the bombing. Wow. So this is real. This stuff is real. And this kind of was this ever-present thing Thing. I mean, when people talk about dark shadows in their life, mm -hmm. they, there are dark shadows. Yeah. But we've got to work out what they are to be able to understand them. And then they dissipate. They go. They go. They become something different. And we can um, interweave them back into our lives and work out how we go forward from there. Mm -hmm. But keeping them as dark presence externally will always create fear for us if we can't work out what they are, where they've come from and what meaning they have in our life. Do you think that obviously you were born after these experiences were had with your parents? Mm -hmm. Do you think that some of that may have been passed down? And Absolutely. I'm, like not even just Absolutely. taught but like passed. Oh, it's it's a DNA imprint. Like yeah. epigenetics, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Things can be so, tra so traumatic for people that um, they can't process them. And if it's a continual thing, I mean, war happened for many, many years in World War II, uh, and then the whole um, having to leave the country, go to another country mm. elsewhere with literally what you're standing in and start all over again is a, a very traumatic experience, and that will change your DNA. Uh, and so, you know, when I look back on those dark things that I saw as a child, was I seeing visions and memories of what my parents went through? Yeah. I'd probably look back at it now and go, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Well, it's almost like past life stuff yeah. but through your parents. Yes. Yeah. Well, you, you hear people talk about why kids are scared of what's under the bed and what's in the dark. It's it's thousands of years of being terrified of what will kill you in the dark. Mm. Yeah. Um, off topic, what, what did your mother tell you about Auschwitz? She didn't tell me a lot, and you'll find that people who I can imagine, yeah, yeah have really traumatic experiences. Uh, my mother was in front of the firing squad three times. Wow! And she missed three times. Uh, and at that stage, it was right at the end of the war, so it was the last six to eight months of the war. So by that stage, she hadn't been, um, or she wasn't. They weren't tattooing anymore. They were just piling them in yep. to to you know, burn them and get rid of them as quickly as possible. So uh, she was telling me that um, she, they would line them up in the morning and they would choose a number, odds or evens, and then they'd go one, two, three, four, five, all odds, you're gone. Mm. And so she missed three times. Fuck me. Uh, and my father uh, was uh, an aeroplane pilot um, and a, a paratrooper and uh, one of the first times that he actually had to uh, – leave the aeroplane via a parachute. The parachute um, didn't work properly and he broke both legs, both arms. And so when the Germans caught him, they, they put him into a hospital mm. because they, they treated um, the sort of the officers and um, some of the military with a little bit of dignity, but they still mm. put them into concentration camps behind um, German lines yep. and made them work. Um, and so he was in hospital getting his legs repaired Bless and him. one of the legs, uh, one one leg didn't set properly after many, many months. Um, and so they rebroke it and reset it. Mm. And so he always had one leg shorter than the other and had pain in that leg the rest of his life. Wow. So, yeah, 
There you go. Bless him. I'm boring compared to her. Sorry. Yeah, I think a, we all are. <laughs> what an amazing story to, wow. from, from those two people yeah. and to yeah. have and, that. And they were two people that should never have been together, yeah. never. They, they could have killed each other many times. Mm-hmm. Um, they were two people that had to meet and survive after the war and that's what happened and that's why they got married. It was survival. It wasn't anything to do with love. Mm. Um, and what do you mean by survival? Well, they, they both met um, coming out of the country yep. um, because the, the ships were coming in to take them out of the country, just mm. like we're seeing people leave now from the Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and they were both single. Right. Uh, and my father was actually going to meet his girlfriend at that point in time terrible story uh, but it didn't work out and they kind of somehow got together my mother and father um, and my mother had a way of coercing him uh, hey. and, and, um, and saying well um, you know I'll, they had to kind of leave at that point and um, so she kind of took his girlfriend's place kind of kind of yep. you know if you know what I mean yep, so, yep. Um, and they left so yep. they, they left on a big ship um, and had to travel out uh, to Australia. So you had an opportunity to either go to Canada or Australia. Australia was the quickest yep. place to go, so they decided to go to Australia. I missed Canada by that much. <gasps> so close. And, um, yeah, and then they started here at Greta Camp. So all, all the, mm. um, you know, uh, migrants came out to Greta Camp and that's how their life started. So with the, with the dark entities you're seeing as a child, mm-hmm. do they form like, form into people or, or did you see these around as you got older? Like would you walk past uh, a cemetery and someone would be there or, or, or those type of things? Like is this something you saw constantly or just? No, these dark shadows were very much uh, always a threatening thing. Mm. Um, if I was seeing any spirits around or ghosts, to me they weren't threatening. Mm. They were a different thing altogether. Okay. Um, so that was kind of at a different stage. Yep. Um, more than anything, this whole horrendous trauma thing um, was in my earlier years up until I sort of got to 11, 12, 13. Um, I went to school without knowing English. My parents never taught me English. So it was only the English that I was picking up from the neighbours. They always spoke Polish to me. So I literally went to school without an English language. Trauma in itself. Yeah. A Catholic school. Trauma in itself. (laughs) What were the other kids like? They were horrible. Absolutely horrible. She used to come home at lunchtime. (sighs) And I used to come home at lunchtime. Yeah. Um, because I was so traumatised about being at school. <laughs> and they, they had hell. to they had to push me back to school saying, you have to go to school, but I don't That's want the to. worst feeling, yep. Yeah. So interesting childhood. And the reason I ask that is because the first time we met was at uh, the cathedral here in Newcastle. Yes. And I had contacted you because I was working for a, a courier company and we are doing a video about how uh, different stories, like ghost stories in the city of Newcastle. And I basically Googled Newcastle ghosts and your name came up and I thought, well, she doesn't look too much like a ghost, but a little bit. And I saw I so now. More so now. <laughs> yes. So I um so I, I got in touch with you and we 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 met at the cathedral. Yep. And you said to me that you I said, Oh, you know, how are you? How's your day been? You said you were just out the back talking to people in yeah. the graveyard. Yeah. How, how did, yeah, so what Go on. what goes on through that? Because I'm always fascinated through this too. How, not how, but what does it feel like to sort of have an energy or a ghost reach out to you? And like, does that scare you or excite you? And, and, and who are you, you talking to? Yeah. Like, mm. Sometimes you've got to wait to work out who you're talking to. Mm. So it just comes yeah. into your mind sort of. Yeah, uh, and this is all about belief um, and that sense of belief that you have in the process. Mm-hmm. And like you know, a lot of people, me included, would spend 50% of the time going, I'm just making all this shit up. You know, mm-hmm. this isn't real. And then the other fifty percent of the time, I've got to say to myself, I've just got to, I've got to wing it. I've got to go with it mm. because this is the only way I'm going to reach that connection. Yeah, I've just got to believe that all of this is happening, and I've just got to let the information flow through. Mm. So a lot of it is practice sitting out yeah. there and going, I'm just going to allow myself to reach out and see who mm-hmm. talks to me. Mm. So you talk to them as if they're right there in front of you, and you say, How are you? 
No, I'm, I'm here if you want to say something to me, if you want to tell me a bit of your story or whatever it is. I'm really interested. I always go up to Headstones and go, hello, how are you? Um, I've bought you a flower. Um, or, you know, it's a really interesting headstone. This is beautiful. Who made this for you? And you kind of just go into this conversation. Yep. They were living people once, yeah. so she yeah. likes to treat the dead as you would yeah. the living, yeah. so yeah. sometimes better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes you get something really funny in your head and, uh, you know, they'll go, go away, or um, I'm, I'm glad to see you or whatever it might be. And sometimes you get nothing at all and that that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. But you've got to allow yourself this process. And as Anne said, you've got to get into that mindset of these people were here. They meant something to someone uh, and they left people behind that were grieving. So I'm going to give them that element of respect and go, I'm interested in you. And the only way people will open up, even living people, is when you go, you know what, I'm interested in you yep. and I want to hear from you. I want, to, yep. I want you to tell me something about yourself. Yep. So we disappear mm-hmm. and we are just this channel for them to speak. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the process. Um, but, I, yeah, I had freaky things. Um, I, I was a <laughs> freaky kid. I was one of those kids that never really got on with a lot of people at school. We had our little niche of... Um, other freaky kids, you know, that were special in some way. I don't think way. anything's changed, you know, no, because nothing. we've still got our little niche of freaky <laughs> yes. people that hang around yes. us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's you kind of think, that, oh, I can't even picture my life without any of this. Yeah. I can't. It's just part of who I am. Mm. Um, and there has always been a need to read about stuff and to learn stuff and to get into esoteric things and to be – You're a researcher in, that, in many ways, yeah. both of you. Like yeah. everything that you guys have learnt, like obviously a lot of it would come from passion, but I just feel like you guys are just so interesting to talk to because you know so much mm. about yeah. different things and then it comes together and it just creates this yeah. – it's just fascinating. And it's that, so cool. That's one thing that Claire and I have always found, that you are – historically speaking, very, very sound in your knowledge. Mm. Like yeah. you know more than They're most They're smart people. ladies. Oh, no doubt. But yeah. it's not just, you know, going out there chasing ghouls. It's not ghouls. all ghouls no. and witches. No. It's, yes. it's knowing yeah. the entire story of wherever we happen to be mm-hmm. yeah. and and revealing some of that um, when, when we go to those mm. places. And what about you? What, what, what brought you into this field? You're not a medium, right? No, I'm an extra large. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say that, and I was saying I was going to say like about but me, all of the anyway. comedians. Oh okay. Jesus! <laughs> I can set you up for that one. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Uh, You've got to be quick nowadays. Yeah, yes, very true. <laughs> yes, I. I had experiences when I was a toddler as well. I used to go to stay at my grandparents' place and yep. um, there would be times where they'd put me to sleep in my, my grandparents' bed and I would have this something going on under the bed where the bed would like something was under it and hitting it. Mm. Uh, and then there was one night that I, I saw something, a black shadow shoot out through the window. Oh, uh, yuck. And I used to call it the hooker naughty. The what? The hooker naughty. The Huganori. The Huganori. <laughs> this right. is like a two, three year old. They'd ask me, "What is it?" I said, "It's the Huganori." Okay. And um, so it was definitely something because you was, named it. And they they just said, you know, it was oh. a the figment of imagination of a child. Of course. Yep. Uh, and I think it was something to do with it was Stockton. So I think it, yep. it may have been uh, traditional own, owners' land, and it may have been some sort of Dreamtime Aboriginal spirit that may have been there. Uh, but I would scream bloody murder, and this was going on. For like years, and Far out. It, it was terrifying. But once I got into high school, and to um, I would I'd be interested in any ghost story I could possibly find. Mm-hmm. So I'd be renting out all those books from the library, reading that, and then you'd have the friends that would be saying, "Let's go and do a séance under the stairs." Yeah, and I went, you know, what if one of us has an ability to actually open a doorway and we let something through? So this is the mind of a thirteen-year-old. Yeah, that's mm. full on. And yep. I just seem to have this respect for the other side way before. Most people. Yep. Um, so I, I was very careful and we used to do that light as a feather, stiff as a board. You know, oh, hello. What? Oh, <laughs> oh, you don't know. No. Light as a feather, no. stiff as a board. That, I, I don't want to hear about your um, <laughs> love life, Anne. Well, Deary me. Uh, no, it was where you'd get somebody to lay flat on the ground and then 
all uh, you'd have a, a group of friends that would go around oh, and right. they'd stick a finger underneath their body <laughs> okay. or in their body, under <laughs> their body. That's lucky. Um, and they would start to chant, oh, there goes the microphone, uh, light as a feather, stiff as a board, light as a feather, stiff as a board. And this is going to start them all doing it again now. You realise all the yeah. teeny boppers that listen to oh, this, yeah. they'll, they'll be doing it. Yeah. And the, the person would start to come up off the ground. And I had experiences where people were lifting right up off the ground and – for someone around the age of 14 and 15, that was quite terrifying. Uh, so there, there was that whole aspect of stuff, which yep. I, it still drove me forward a bit more to learn more. Move on a bit further. I had a friend who was a psychic medium and uh, my friend was having issues out at their house, a different friend. They said, we've got a ghost in the house. We don't know what to do. Can you help? So I grabbed my friend and said, come on, you're a psychic medium. Come out, help us. And um, they were having picture frames that were being thrown against the wall, this smell that we couldn't work out where it was coming from. They had a cement slab house, so it wasn't the sewers or anything like that. It had all been checked. Um, anyway, my friend Joe they channeled this entity and instructed me to talk to them. Right. Now, at this stage, I'm going, oh, what the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, he, and this is when I was in my early 20s, and uh, he did that, and I spoke to this entity that was in the house, and it turned wow. out it was a childhood imaginary friend that the mother of the house had who had come back to her um, with an unrequited love or felt that he needed her to be present at that time. So um, I then had to talk him through it with the mother talking to this spirit saying, but you don't need to be here anymore. She's now got a family. You're, you're actually frightening the family. You need to step back. So I with counseled. no yeah counseled and with no real knowledge of what I was doing crossed a spirit over to the other side wow and that was it i was like <gasps> oh, i need yeah. to know more wow so i joined a little spiritual well, we're boring I know, I know. <laughs> Joined a spiritualist yeah. little group and I started to learn how to channel and how to be a medium and how to look at crystals and do all that sort of stuff. But my logical brain just wasn't coping with it. Was it really spirit talking to me? That's a huge me? part of it, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And I did have yeah. an experience when I was around the age of 17 where we went to a um, the Y. MCA, it's a house up near the cathedral. It's fun to stay at. Yeah. <laughs> See, the YW or the YM, I can't remember. He's not <laughs> yes. funny. Uh, and I saw this shimmery outline of three little old ladies sitting in this alcove and I rep- I didn't know what it was. There was shit going down in that house, let me oh, tell you. Oh, I bet. Apart from people losing their virginity. <laughs> uh, there was – I reported back to my grandmother and I said – I. I saw this in the window. What was it? And she said, that's really weird. I used to live across the road. There was three little old lady sisters that lived in that house and they used to like to sit in the window. And it was at that moment that I realised I actually can interact with the other side. So you know what happened? Shut it down. Yeah, You got scared from it? I I think because of that worry I had as – younger mm. that um too real uh, yeah i had no one to guide me i had no yeah. one to talk to me about this sort of stuff where was renata when i needed Renata's. her i've been and thinking that i had the catholic upbringing as well and i went to that school where it all went down with the pedo priests right mm. my class really yeah so there's not a lot of trust there <sighs> yeah, fuck that. Yeah, of course um not. and uh yeah so I mean, moving on a little bit, had children. I really shut everything down uh, until I went to my uh, cousin Lisa's house and I saw a ghost hunting TV show and they're walking around with gadgets and there's lights flashing. I'm going, oh, my God, I can communicate on the other side using gadgets that flash. I like that. It's safer that I don't have to expose me Mm. and I don't have to be a conduit. This can be a conduit. So that's sort of how I got into it. Then went on a ghost tour in Newcastle. It was a different team that ran it. Joined a paranormal team and eventually hooked up with this one here. Wow. And your hubby being an electrical engineer, yes. he would. did he sort of get you going with the actual he, he, machines? And yeah, he was or? my sounding board. Um, yeah. because that's I, so cute. I have this <laughs> – Skeptical mind, but I didn't like school and I didn't really study science. And um, I, you know, I chose music and art because I thought that would be easy. Mm. Yes, <laughs> Wrong. feels. Uh, yeah. But 
he he would explain to me why this piece of equipment might be going off, um, what it is that I'm looking for. And so I started to learn from him and then I started to do courses online. I studied with the Rhine Institute. Um, we did some nice little courses with the Centre of Excellence. Uh, and the then Centre of Excellence? Excellence. Yeah, what a name. You get a diploma. Do you? Because you've got to be good at multiple choice questions on that one. Ah, very good. Um, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... Uh, I um, the last one I just did the late last year was with the University of Edinburgh, which was I remember an, you did yeah that one. introduction yep. to parapsychology, which my brain just started to dribble out my ears with the level of language that was at, yep, wow. um, and that was studying the human mind and how that it might not be ghosts, it might be us. Mm. So I now feel like I've I've got a I'm not an expert, but I've got a good knowledge in an overall. Um, <sighs> What, what can we say, a uh, range of stuff in the paranormal world, yeah. the occult mm. world. Jack of um, all trades. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, neither of us would ever say we were experts. So I reckon that at this point in the podcast, people have either gone uh, one way or the other. They're going, these people are full of shit yep. or this is what I need to hear. Yep. Yep. Or this is my field or this is what I'm really interested in. And that's what we find with people. Yeah. Yep. Um, because we're, Claire and I are into the paranormal. We love the ghost hunting shows. We love horror movies. We love all oh, that type of stuff. Big talk fans. dirty to me. Yeah, that's, how we, that's how we get it out then. Uh, that's how oh, yes. it goes Ecto- bumping. Ectoplasm. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. It goes bumping the night here. Don't oh, worry yeah. about that. Um, it stinks. Fucking par, Don. Sorry. Uh, and... We, we really enjoy what we do with you guys. We love making the documentaries and that type of stuff. We understand why people are sceptical. Mm-hmm. 100%. Absolutely. And you, ha- and you have to be. And I know yep. you guys are very open to that because yep. It, yep. it makes complete sense. Yep. Um, I was very sceptical. I was very open to the idea. I've only had probably two or three experiences that I could say maybe were paranormal. The first one was the first doco we shot, which is up in Gold Coast without you guys. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, when I had a whisper in my ear and there was no one around us. Mm-hmm. And that was clear as day and we picked it up on the microphone. Mm. That was interesting. That mm. was weird. There was a female's voice and there was no females behind me. That shook you too. You talk about that. Any time we ever talk about anything ghost-related, you always mention that. I always pull it up too because yeah. it's it's there. It's, it's yeah. captured. Creepy. It's, it's, it's evidence. You experienced it. And that's, yeah. that's what I need in life. I, I mm. It's great other people telling you stories, but you don't have the um, – primary source you, you i want to be the primary source of what happens so yeah. i can experience myself yeah. and, and you know people always embellish stories yeah. but, but having understand it, yeah having it on camera though that was what was important for me yeah. because it's like it's there and you can see that there's no one behind you reacted and it's great it's because terrifying. people actually and we've had the footsteps um mm-hmm. and maitland jail yep. we also yep. had the um yep. the seance we did at maitland jail yep. And people are like, no, you guys fake that. And that's always cool to read. You're because not you smart go, enough to fake shit. <laughs> but <laughs> no, it's cool to lazy. read because yeah. it's like, yeah. okay, they really they yeah. they think it's so real that it that it must be fake. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people are uh, find this very confronting mm-hmm. uh, that when they are actually having that experience, it's like somebody dumps icy cold water down your back as your brain realizes what is happening. Mm. And it 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 breaks open everything you've believed, doesn't it, Renata? It does, but then there is this opportunity to go, okay, I need to find out more and I need to be open. Yeah. Uh, and or it shuts it down and goes, nah, yeah. I don't want to have anything to do with that because it's too much information. I can't handle it. I'm just going to go on with my mundane life the way it is and mm. I don't want to rock the boat. Yep. No, we love sceptics. We yep. really do because if they can offer us an alternative explanation based on the evidence given, not just their gut instincts yeah. or their beliefs, mm. but actually looking at what's happening and knowing that nobody is faking it, if they can offer some opportunity or explanation, that's great. Mm. It's the cynics that I get the shits with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The ones who just go, that's all bullshit, you're faking it. And they're not even willing to sit down and and try it themselves. Yeah. And, you know, you get that with everything. Yeah. You know, there's people who just go, nah, not happening. And I Imagine them at bloody dinner parties. They'd be the most boring boring people. people. Boring people. We had one last night on our our live show. I saw the guy and he said you were ripping them off and you were like, we're doing the show for free. (laughs) free. I was (laughs) like, this guy's fucked. (laughs) I was yelling at me phone. I was like, this guy's a she fucking was, she loser. Was up. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Jesus <laughs> just a, everyone oh. else was lovely, but there were a we few people trolls. that are just, they're just fucked. But that's the internet though. You just so get, good. Yeah. You got insane You get people. used to it. Yeah. I'm a gold digger apparently. Oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> These Yankee candles. They aren't cheap. They aren't cheap. <laughs> but like we um you know, we called you guys when we bought these chairs. Yep. Yes. Because they're 200 years old and we wanted to know that they weren't haunted. Mm-hmm. Um, the helmets that are on the table here, mm-hmm. we asked you guys about those and I wanted Renata to sort of feel if there was anything going on with mm-hmm. those. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we when we bought our house, we wanted you guys to come over and um, – They sort cleansed of our house. Give it a cleansing. And I saged it two days ago too. Mm-hmm. Regardless so. if you believe mm-hmm. in the paranormal or not, it's a good – you know, I, I I bought a lotto ticket when it was $120 million. You may as well cover all bases. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just yeah. in case. And there's nothing wrong with things like wanting to cleanse and clear your home and go, I want good juju and I want great energy in there. Because it can't just, hurt. It's just by saying that you're changing yeah. the energy that's there. Mm-hmm. It's these people that sit in that funk and then yeah. go, well – I don't like it. Well, yeah. what are you doing about it? Exactly. I'm not doing anything. Well, what do you expect? Yeah. Yep. And I think the, the word energy loses people too. It loses me a little bit because it's like, okay, well, what is a positive energy? But it's an intention. It's like it a, is. It's, it's a the feeling. word vibe that makes me go, never mind. Yeah. Energy I can get yeah. behind. But once someone says positive vibes, I just think, oh. But it's like if someone Christ. goes, oh, there's a really positive energy in here, it's like, fuck off, mate. Yeah. But if you're like, everyone's Smell really, the happy, coffee beans. Everyone's really, really happy and, and, and lovely in here, yeah. you know, that's the yeah. exact same yeah. thing as saying yeah. it's a po- positive energy. And Absolutely. whether or not it's the same, you know, sort of actual physical thing, if that even is a, a possibility. But it is. Because it has been proven it's we, a physical thing, but though, hasn't it? We have all We have all Walked, walked into spaces where we go, mm, what's yeah. been going yeah. on here? Yep. And you can feel it. It just feels different. It was yep. like um, we were down in under that house in, oh, where was that? The house where the convicts were held. Oh, yes, Lock and Var. Lock and Var house. Yes. And we were, mm. there's a, if you go to our YouTube channel, it's there. Um, the room of the basement was just a horrible place. Now, mm-hmm. basements aren't nice, but this no. was bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was just shit, and being down there was so just depressing. It and and what sure, did it make you feel? Oh, I just felt horrible. Like yeah. I felt sad. I felt gross. I felt mm. dirty. I felt, and whether or not that is um, just because you're in a basement, mm. sure, and mm-hmm. you know the history, and of you know the things. history, yeah, yeah. But it did feel quite like possessive of of, of any sort of like positive thoughts or whatever. Mm. It also didn't help that we had a some fucking. Hero decided to put a smoke machine down there <laughs> and no one told me. So I just thought people were kicking up dust. I was like, I'm going to die of asbestos here. <laughs> I had no idea. It was so <laughs> much dust in the air. I oh, don't forget the red light. So that when oh. we opened up the, the thing, there's smoke red light coming there, pour and fall. I liked the great. red light. I, I, I bet you do. You should, have, <laughs> you should have seen Claire in the, when we were in Amsterdam in the red light district. Um, we're there at like it's four in the story. afternoon. It's getting old, Butterfield. It's not this story. Old. It's hilarious. I haven't heard it. Okay, oh, so we're walking around Amsterdam. Shit in me eye. Hang on. We, we haven't done anything. We've just got there, sort of thing. We came straight from Rome, oh, and um, look at us go. We're walking around, and the red light district sort of just comes upon you. It's just there. Just so, wipe it off, so to speak. Yeah, I know it's poor choice of words. Um, and there's a red light. There's like a window coming up with a lady in it. Now I haven't seen it yet. Claire definitely hasn't seen it, but it's it's quite a busy passageway through two buildings, and there's probably about twenty people walking this way, and we're in a group of about fifteen, you know, strangers and whatnot, uh, walking that way. And I see the girl in the window. I bet you do. <laughs> a lady in lingerie, a, a professional. Oh, a professional. A, hard, okay. a hardworking, brave woman. Entrepreneur. An entrepreneur. Yeah. And Claire spots her and just screams. She's like, what the fuck? Which, like, I don't know if you – did you not know about the red light district? No, I didn't. And then there was – Oh, um, oh darling. She was terrified. I grew up sheltered. What and have then, you done to her? I, I, well, we went, to, we went to a sex show that night. Oh, it was wow. hilarious. Oh, I don't know if you've ever been to a sex show in Amsterdam. Hilarious. You should go. It's just great. No, it was so, so funny. Good. They're all sold out when we were there. So. It's, oh. it's honestly we so need, worth it. We need more Patreons. That's yeah, all I Exactly need. right. <laughs> when you're over in the UK, go to Amsterdam. I know it's not oh. in the UK, but go to Amsterdam while you're over there. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was like, I know you don't like the, the F word. Can I use it now or I'll will it do something? It. It was like a fairyland. Yeah, I, it's, I it's your, your equipment that's yeah. going to be blown up, not ours. Oh so dear, it's all good. that's all right then. Sorry, Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> we get in trouble talking about fairies. I, I'm fairies not, we're not getting into fairies yeah. in this fucking. But honestly, Amsterdam was just like a make believe place. And I remember when we were leaving I Rome, loved it. I was like, "Oh, this is going to be a bunch of potheads fucking around everywhere." And when and we got that, there, there was that. <laughs> but the actual energy. 
of the place. Oh, it was happy. Felt yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really happy. It was just, and the colours and everything. You guys would love it. And the food. Oh, yeah. the oh, so food. Yes. Oh my god. Everything. The strudels. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, oh, the doodles. It was everything. Stop strudels now. and doodles. We'd come out of Poland before we went there, and um, so we were in this. So almost, you did go. Oh yeah, I've been. She hasn't. <gasps> uh, you third, did go together. It's almost like a third world country. We got to Amsterdam. We felt like we'd finally come home. It's yeah. almost like we could breathe yeah. again. It was. Wonderful. Yeah, no, Amsterdam's Beautiful. great, and the sex shows are funny. Like it's not yeah. like a sexual. It's not thing. what you think. Because yeah. I remember going, "I'm not going to a fucking sex show. What is that?" And then this guy came out with the biggest black dick we've ever seen. <laughs> Huge. Humongous. Huge. And we just went, "Oh my god!" This massive black dude came out, pulled his pants. He was the he had, hero of the show. The, and then <laughs> everyone who's there with us, we all just stand up and go, "Yes." <laughs> But there's heaps of like there's a, there's a few um, uh, Indian gentlemen and um, oh in suits a, Asian gentlemen in suits at the front taking it very seriously full serious like <laughs> analysing and they're just like mm, yes, it was that weird is a good vagina. <laughs> but yeah Claire freaked out at the red light district and the mm. peep show now there was a lady oh, she I feel would have bad been, about that she would have been late forties uh, fingering herself in a peep show she put a euro in. And then a window pops up and you look at it and there was just this old lady, no offence. Um, she was older than that, actually. She was just jamming herself and Claire screams again. I didn't know they could hear us. <laughs> of course they could hear you. Well, I thought it was a Pete, like, we see them, they can't hear no, us. And she, I was like, Claire oh, that's screams, gross. And she goes, that's gross. And old love no. hears her. And you can see everyone I'm else in the peep show. sorry if you're watching this. I doubt it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she is. You had a beautiful <laughs> body. It just wasn't for me. No, she did. It was awful. And her is red raw now. Oh, it was disgraceful. <laughs> but the peep show is this round building and you can see everyone else watching at the same time. So everyone looks at us and I'm like, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> I've always great. been a big mouth. I don't mean to. Nah, you're great. Yes. Um, we, we squirrel, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Oh, How did we end up here? Oh, <laughs> it was a, it was a really great time. But I, I guess one of the you know if we're going to do a paranormal podcast, I guess we've got to say you know what happens if someone listening to this is experiencing something paranormal in their house. Like what do you what about this? If you encounter a ghost, right. like a full apparition, mm -hmm. what should you do? It depends on what you want to do. And we've heard a thousand different stories. So some people will just go, oh, yeah, that's okay, fair enough, and be done with it. Some people would be screaming their heads off and going, oh, my God, this is the first time I've ever had anything like this. I don't even know where to go and what to do. Jesus has forsaken me. <laughs> there will be people who do run to their uh, local pastor Mm. And and want something done. There Holy will be, water. Yeah, mm. there will be people who will ring a psychic medium and ask them to come and smudge the house. And there will be a number of people that come and contact a paranormal group or a ghost tour group, ghost hunting group, and say, "This is what's happened. What do you think it is?" Mm. Uh, and there are a number of different alternatives and people will try many of them and there are some people who will not be happy with the first thing that's said to them and, yep. and then they will search for the answer that fits their paradigm of what yep. the world is so we can go out there and we can say look actually this isn't a ghost yep. so they might may or may not have seen something this isn't a ghost this is something that's going on um of a, a more um Mundane. Human and mundane <laughs> yes. configuration yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and you might need to do this, this or this or this and they'll kind of look at you and go, mm -hmm. She doesn't know what she's talking yeah, about. She, she hasn't doesn't. mentioned a demon. Yeah, yeah exactly. She doesn't yeah. know anything. And they're Someone just, watched too many movies. Yeah, they're just yeah. waiting to go out the door and uh, they'll ring the next person. Mm. Yeah. And, and quite we, a, that's what will happen is they'll just yeah. keep ringing until… Someone uh, says what they want. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. That's bad. But the problem is if you believe that a smudging is going to help you, then guess what happens? A, a smudging, smudging will help you. A smudging you. being yep. a, like a clearing of the yeah, house. A clearing yeah. of the house. Yep. Yeah. That's what will help you. And yep. that might be what settles down the energies that are yep. there or whatever has been mucking up. Um, and that might be enough mm -hmm. until the next time mm -hmm. because you haven't really solved the problem. Mm -hmm. All you've done is solved that little bit of what has happened in the whole process. Yeah. So it it is always an um, – I've, I've done a counselling course. I spent mm -hmm. three years doing um, counselling and uh, I thought I was going to get out of it and be a counsellor. I didn't realise that I'd be using it 15 years later mm -hmm. to be a counsellor but – a spiritual counsellor. Yeah. Uh, and we do, we, we spend a lot of time when we go to people's homes 
always, first of all, sitting down and having a chat to what, what's happening with people. We normally never go to a home and pull gadgets out. And the only thing I might take with me is an electromagnetic field detector just yep. to see if there's any high levels of EMF within mm. the house, which causes issues for humans yep. in in the real world, not in the ghostly world. We're not looking for ghosts with it. Um, if you're sleeping next to a high EMF field, you could be doing yourself harm. So that's why we take that. We don't take anything else. Mm. But imagine uh, I watched one on TV um, on one of the channels and I said to Anne, if you want to see something that you're not supposed to do about going into a haunted house, you've got to watch this. Because I was screaming <gasps> at the TV going, how can you put this family through this? And this was in England and they were in this tiny little house um, that had a downstairs and an upstairs and the family was in the house. And the, the house was filled with people running cameras Oh. and just being in the way. And this yep. poor woman, they tried to interview her and she's on this little couch sitting there in this little ball trying to tell them what's going on. She's terrified. And these these guys are going, oh, my God, I'm seeing something over there. Oh, and oh my God, fuck. I'm seeing something over there. And in, in, in one bit she runs out of the house almost ready to throw up because she's just so frightened. And you go, that is not the way to do it. See, so sadly, no. some ghost hunters see um, uh, if somebody rings up and says, I need help, they'll go, oh, this is an opportunity Cash for grab. us. To, Vulnerability. Well, uh, to investigate a haunted location yeah. and they can be the heroes. They can be the Lorraine and Ed Warrens yeah. of the world. <laughs> Don't even get me started on them. I was going to say, are you, you guys have like uh, mentioned mm. Ed and Lorraine Warren a few mm. times. Would you be able to touch on that in a minute if that's okay? If you really I wanted want to hear. To. I wanted to hear your details about why you're a bit. We may lose a lot of fans. On that <laughs> no, one. fuck them. If you don't like it, fuck off. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> <No>. and look. <laughs> Who is she? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Who is this woman? She's not the same woman no. that we, we met like two years is ago. Is she going to start going, get out, you good motherfucker? <laughs> I've sort of, oh, we've sort so. of, we've morphed into the same person. Yeah, you do. We really <laughs> are. You make me be a little bit more, uh, and I make you a little bit softer. Oh, okay. In the bedroom. <laughs> oh, I don't really like that. I'm sorry. Renata. Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus. never mind. Anyway, back to Ed and Lorraine. Oh. Yes. No, I think we're on the ghost hunters in the, the, yes. the house. And yeah. um, then they go in and they'll do this big investigation. Mm. They'll terrify the family saying, yes, you've got a demonic energy in the house because mm. their only training is watching ghost hunting TV shows. Mm. So Sounds like me. Yeah, they're mimicking <laughs> what they see on TV because yeah. yeah. that's the way you've got to do it if you're going to be a ghost hunter. Yeah. And then they go, all right, thank you so much for allowing us to come in and investigate your house why? And they leave you there. They yeah. leave you there with, after telling them, yes, you've got demons. Yeah. And, yep. um, then these poor families are going, what do we do now? Yep. What do we mm. do? And there was one case in Australia where there was a team that worked with this particular person for years and this person did have mental health issues, but they ignored that. They just said, yes, there's demons in the house and that person took their life. Yeah. Well, it's very real for these people. It is. Because they're feeding yeah. into the delusion. Absolutely. And in particular if they're mentally ill. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you think – because I know you guys used to go to some people's houses Oh, we still stuff. do. You still do? Yeah. Um, do you think mental illness has a lot to play with it there's sometimes? A, there's a fine line. And grief. Grief uh, is the biggest yeah, one. Grief and okay. trauma have a lot to do with it and uh, we find that a lot of people have had past trauma, especially in the early years uh, of their lives, that affect them through the rest of their life and they become very, very vulnerable. And, I mean, the whole f- – aspect of demons and the devil and all of this has been around for centuries so we have been terrified by these things Mm. for a very long time Uh, and a a lot of us will always still have that moment in time of going oh but they're talking about demons and and the devil it must be real yeah Yeah. it must be something that i've done so there's guilt involved as well so all of these things are normal human issues but you tie them up into some sort of a religious context (coughs) And yeah, away you go. Well, it was, what, religion was a way to control people, fear it was. instilled Absolutely. into people, and, and, and Lucifer Absolutely. and Satan was um, he was the 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 boogeyman, the mm. the scary monster in the cupboard. You don't do as you're told. The boogeyman's going to come and get you. And Wait parents, until your dad gets home. Yeah, exactly. It's that's that's thing. who Satan and Lucifer is for Christianity, and mm. other religions will have their own version of that. Mm. Teaches people a lesson. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Follow the rules, or, or you're going to be screwed over. Mm. And it also gives people 
like answers, like why bad things happen. Well, the devil does it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good things happen. God spiritual does it. bypassing, we call it. They're yeah. not taking responsibility for the actions themselves. They they pass it off to someone else. It's an yeah. external factor that's caused this issue, not us. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, on top of so when people see something, yes, they should just see what happens. Well, look. <laughs> I'm rumbling, sorry. Yeah, and this this is hard. Again, um, you know, in what context have you seen something? Okay, let's uh, let's just go know, hypothetical, right? So yeah, so you've you've seen a ghost in your house. It might be the first time you've seen it. Yeah, it's it could be one of those things. Just one of those. It's things. an actual a term in the paranormal field called jot. Just one of those things. So, so like just like a one in a million. Yeah, sort just, of just, just one in a million thing. Wow. And you go, okay, fair enough. Um, not in context with anything, just one of those things. Yeah, it was an amazing experience, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Have, right. you ha- have you had one of those where you walk somewhere and there's just something, a jot happening right in front of you? Yeah, oh, all the time. Yep. I mean, most of the, the paranormal world is um, it's a spontaneous sure, event. Sure, it's sure. not something that you can predict. If we could predict it, then we'd have all the answers to our questions. Mm. Um, and so we... Uh, tend to be in places where some of these spontaneous events happen. And my spontaneous event was Maitland Jail mm. where I saw somebody walking ahead of me in the dark without their flashlight and I was about to yell at them and I say, I remember this story, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't have your flashlight. You, uh, but I just wanted to make sure my tour group was coming behind me so I, I turned oh. around and then they disappeared. The place they had disappeared, there was no exit and Roman, my husband, had come in the other way oh. with the other half of the team and there was no one in between us. They had gone. And wow. they were as solid as you and me. I've not seen it since. Wow. And it was a man, wasn't it? You it was thought a man. it was a man? <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. I, don't, I, mean, I could see the clothes he was wearing, the st- style of hair he had, the fact that it was a bit bald on top, um, leather bomber jacket. It was as solid as you and me. Shit. <laughs> I love that story. I remember when you told us that at the Maitland Jail and I was just like, yeah. holy fuck. Yeah, I got online as soon as it happened and mm. I'm doing a live at the end of it going, oh, my God, this just happened. And you can tell when someone's had a real experience because their voice has, uh, and I'm an actor but I'm not that good an actor, um, <laughs> their voice has this edge to it where they're, they're slightly hysterical. Well, and adrenaline starts yeah. spiking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's you where know, I was you're at. Like, you're like, holy <laughs> shit, this isn't. I've finally seen something. And I've been doing this for 11 years and I'll see little shadows out of the corner of my eyes. I might see a shadow walk across somewhere. Um, but this was someone who was solid. Wow. And are, are ghosts, like things that you would see, are they normally, like would you be, say we were having coffee out somewhere, would you be able to sort of pick up if there was a ghost somewhere and see them as a like block figure or is it more of just a feeling? Because I always wonder, is it visual or is it more a feeling? It depends um sometimes i have seen what and it's never really a full body Mm. um it is like a a silhouette of or Mm. an outline of but that can sometimes be um quite i guess in a way where i can explain what it is and sometimes it is just a feeling yeah but if if it's if if there is something there i normally feel it yeah. I normally can feel it. Yep. And um, I'll say to Anne, I don't think there's anything here. She, yep. she is shocking to be with when a spirit comes in, let yeah. me tell you. Because we'll be sitting quietly doing a session somewhere and all of a sudden she goes, oh, and she jumps. And <gasps> it's, it's almost like somebody has poked her with a cra- cattle prod. <gasps> and it scares the fucking shit out of you if you're in the I dark. it does. <laughs> Jesus. It's not the ghosts that worry me, it's her. Oh, my God. And that that's normally my... Um, my sort of button. Is that your tell? Yeah, my button that's <laughs> pressed that goes, okay, there's something here now. I've yeah. got to tune in and I've got to work out what it is. Yep. So the first thing is this presence of um, a real rush or it's like they step in and step out or move through. Whatever it is, it's that signal that says, okay, there's something here. Let's try and work yep. out what it is. Um, is that like what happens like in a graveyard? Do you sort of have that like, oh. Like someone's trying yeah, I'll, to. I'll be sitting in a car. I've, yeah. I've had this going to Maitland Jail where I'm sitting in a car, I'm listening to the music and all of a sudden, bam, somewhere. Um, and I go, uh-oh, okay, I've got a visitor. Right. What are they wanting to tell me? And sometimes it's they've come in because there's going to be someone on the tour that they need to leave a message for. So they've come in, they want me to tune in. They want me to work out who, what, when, where and why yep. and then I've got to deliver that message to the tour group and go, does anyone own Auntie Sal? 
Mm. Uh, she died from blah, blah, blah. No, the one and that got me was that you turned up and said, there's a young man that drives a car really fast. He wears a, ha- a hat backwards. He's here with me now. He's about 19. Does anyone own that? And no, they're all looking at each other. No one's going, no, nobody owns that. Um, and she, I think she even came up with the name, uh, like Corey, C-word, something like that. It, but he's here with me. He's being very adamant. He knows somebody here. The next day, somebody rang her and said, that was my cousin. He died in a car accident that night. Yeah. Oh, and you mentioned the football team that he was, yes, um, he was uh, a, a big fan of. Yeah, yeah I um, remember that one. And, and nailed it. So wow. he had... But they take the opportunity if they're going to try and get a message to someone. Oh my God. Um, she's got like this little light above her head and they're going, open. So wow. ske- skeptically speaking, you say, oh, we've come on a ghost tour. We don't know you from a bar or soap. And you say, who's got a um, someone in their family who wears a hat backwards and drives too fast? Like that's a lot of families. Yeah. Mm. Um, I remember when we did a seance and you said that we've got someone with us and it was a grandfather and you spelt out Ted. I'll never forget that. And that's Claire's grandfather's mm-hmm. name who passed away. Yeah. Ted. No, n- nothing anywhere on Ted's nothing. not a name. Like it's no. not like a it's not like a James. Like, you know, sure no. people are called Ted. Yeah. And they were called it's, Ted. It's a very odd name to pull out of your ass if you're faking it. And we spoke to Claire's family, we're like and they, and they said, Well, it must be on the internet somewhere. There's yeah. nothing on the internet about it. I've well, never posted anything. I've never put because he passed, he passed away, away yeah. when I was probably seven. Yeah. You know, like I I, did, I remember sitting on his lap and I remember his smell and I don't remember anything else really. So there's no reason for Claire to post about that on, no. on Facebook or anything like that? I really talk about it, not through lack of caring, I just don't. Well, it was a long time ago. It was ago. a long time ago. And, and to yeah. come up with that name, that shook Claire, it shook me and I was like, like. That was the most concrete thing that's happened to me that made me go, there's definitely more than. You know, because I've always been interested in it, but I'm like, it's ne- nothing like that's going to happen with me because I'm not smart enough to tap into it, mm. like that sort of feeling. But then after that happened and then you mentioned golfing and things, and I know you could say, oh, well, all pops play golf. They fucking don't. But anyway. Well, I mean, I was, but you could you could say that. You could you know? say that because yeah. I know yeah. people when it's I told fishing. them, they were yeah. like, yeah. oh, anyone can play golf. And I was just like, yeah, but – my pop was like an avid golfer. That Mid-natural was his golf shtick. Course, yeah. He yeah. loved it when he got sick with um, Alzheimer's. He actually ran nude across oh, bless the him. I love golf, him free spirit. Yeah, <laughs> golf course, went around their starkers and Grand wouldn't Aww. want me saying that, but he did when he was really Aww. unwell. Mm. So golfing was a massive part of his life and for you to pick up on that, I just went, I already like trusted everything you'd say, but it sort of concreted that there's a lot more than – and What's that, going on in here? And that was after the name too. So that was like, yes. yeah. that was doubling down. Yeah. And we didn't even know Claire was coming that That's night. That's the thing. All we knew yeah. was that it yep. was you and a sidekick. Well, you hadn't met Claire We at hadn't that point. met no. at all. That's what no. shook it even more. And I was and like. I, I was really worried because you had actually mentioned the, uh, your my grandma. And I'm thinking, oh, I wish she hadn't said that because if that's who comes through now, looks they're just going to say that yeah. we've got, oh, well, of course it's your grandma. Mm. So when it came out with that other name, I was like, oh. Phew. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. And um, Zach was with us at the time and who else was there? Um, well, Con- Connor and Stuart, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I'm pretty sure even Zach at the time, who doesn't show much emotion most of the time, he I'm pretty sure he teared up too and yeah. went, holy fucking it was shit, what was on. that? Like all of us felt something. It was full on. it, And, yeah, so we, we were unable to explain it other than – that was there my was biggest I'm one. unable to explain it. Yeah. The only way I, um, that it, parapsychology would explain mm. it is that uh, one of us has the ability to read minds, telepathy, yeah. and you, you thought of the name and mm. so one of us has picked it up and then pushed the glass, which in itself is in pretty itself, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there was another explanation that was um, – Claire's pushing it. Claire's pushing it yeah. um, <laughs> subconsciously and she spelt – but I, I know Claire better than anyone. And I can't see her doing yeah. that. I can't either. I and wish look, I could. We will never convince everyone no. that that's no. real. And that's not we what don't it's need about, to. Though. I don't need to. No. Uh, when we run the seance parlour, we would have people come in with unfinished business all the time. Yeah. Um, and Wasn't quite- that the name of your band at high school? <laughs> Unfinished business. <laughs> business as usual. Oh. Sorry, Claire. Blow it out your ass. <laughs> Continue. That's a, that's a good name for a band. <laughs> yeah. Well. Blow it out your ass. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we they would get messages not from the people they wanted to hear from, but the people they needed to hear from. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Uh, a and lot of tears, a lot of, um, in some places, anger, and then healing tears after that. It, I used to sit there every time going, I don't know what's happening here, but it's pretty fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we've had a number of experiences that I think have one been of, a bit the, weird. The what, most profound one for me was a um, pair of sisters that came in. Yeah. And... Uh, one of them was very frail. She had beautiful hair and the makeup was all done, but she just seemed like she was quite frail and um, she she couldn't put her finger on the glass for very long. We'd just say, just put your fingers on the table, keep the, the connection there. And um, they were asking their messages and they seemed to be getting the answers they were looking for and um, we we had no idea what exactly was going on. We got a message from one of them several months later saying thank you so much for that session my sister had cancer and she died a couple of weeks after that and she was just trying to reach out to her family to see what was on the other side and would they be there for her and that made all the questions she had been asking make sense to us all of a sudden but to be in that situation still makes me like Mm -hmm. choke up today to to give someone that peace of mind when they're facing what they were facing, was one of the most profound things I've I've ever experienced. And that's why we can't fake things because we are left in this situation where we are... It's so important what we say and what we don't it's say. It's a responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's a huge responsibility. And to to fake things and to say things to people just because they want to hear them... Um, that that's not my thing, mm. and that's why I've I've always found it hard to go to that mediumship side and say, oh, I'm a medium. I kind of don't do it because yeah. it's too much pressure for me. Yep. That kind of is that whole John Edwards thing where you mm-hmm. appear and yes, you've got a dead person, you've got a dead person, We've and you've got a message, got and people. you've yeah. got a message, and all of <laughs> yeah. this, and you've got to be like a terrible version of yeah. Oprah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> you've got a dead person. And, and they want these details that they've seen on TV, and you go, I can't give you those details no, every single time. not how it works. It, for me, it's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. And so I'm dependent on whatever it is and however that channel comes through to go, okay, I've got a piece of information for you today to give to this person. There's no guarantee that someone's going to turn up and say, I'm going to give you the right stuff yeah. to prove to this person um, all that they need to know. Uh, and so I can't I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, we do uh, this show at um, oh, the yes. Wyong Milk Factory. Message from Spirit. Message yes. from Spirit. The Wyong Milk Factory. I know. It's yeah, a happening place. <laughs> We've come far. Who's We've booking you? Far. The Wyong Milk Factory. <laughs> Let's go. I know. Stepping stones for Renata. She's a little bit – this is a big thing for her. Yeah. She would only start out and like it was a, a forcing thing to do 20 people in the audience. Okay, yeah. But that's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of people. It is. And I've done not, shows when there's three people and it's terrifying. <laughs> A lot of that would be as well with, I'll, I'll use the word gift because to me it's a gift. Yeah. Like the average Joe just doesn't have the ability to do what you do. And I feel like a lot of that pressure, would that come from, and I don't mean this in a rude way, would this come from you don't want to be made to feel like a freak and having all these people that are there, some believe you, some don't, and they're watching you not necessarily trusting it? I don't want to be in a place where I'm standing there going, I've got nothing. Yeah, mm. that's a and reality feeling of embarrassed. It. I've got nothing. And this yes. is why Renata uses the tarot cards. I keep yeah. saying yeah. to her, you could stand there without those. You don't need them, but yep. that's her safety blanket. I completely understand that. So when that. there's nothing yeah. coming through, she can pull a card and then give the information that is on there and from there it seems to open up open the channel it. and yep. the, it starts to flow. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we all need a bit of confidence. With mm. stand-up, it's getting that first laugh. Yeah. Mm. Yep. You know, yeah. mm. it's it's those type of things. But every time I go out on stage, I'm terrified. Every I worry time. about what if yeah. it, what if it's shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. What if I don't have? What if I just don't have it tonight? But that's what I'm there for. You see. Yeah. Yes. Because I say I've got no talent whatsoever, and I make it up as I go along. And we use the the naughty oracle cards, mm. which was in your bag. You have lots you of talent. Thank you. <laughs> when are we going to do show? When are you going to do a show? Like a like a big like a big show, a big tour. Go and see the um, rest of Australia. Well, well never. Yeah. Oh no, I want to. I want to I so bad. But um I'm we're we're building Renata's confidence up yep. and we've now got to a top of fifty four people in the audience, which was And that's a lot of people. That was pretty good. If you line that amount up, Dad yeah. always says this when we talk about things like and he says, Oh, how many views did something get? 
on the second channel, I'll be like, oh, 14,000. Yeah. And he's like, fuck. And he's like, you blue. light those light those people you up. Burn line, those people. You burn them. You line those people up. That's nearly 60 people that yeah. trust you and adore you and want to hear what you have to say, both mm. of you. And I think with Renata, she also has the pressure that she wants to try and please everyone and yes. give everyone An a message and because yep. they've all paid money to have a seat and um, she feels the need that everyone should get value for money. Yep. And, I mean, that's uh, that's what I'm there for, to entertain them. I exactly. play my ukulele, I squeeze yep. a rubber chook between the legs. And she can sing. <laughs> she does everything. That, but that's what scares me. Every time I go on stage, yeah. I'm terrified about people not getting their money's worth. I mm. hate if I have a – like Claire will listen to most shows. Um, and Every show. Well, you miss bits with, with the merch. But I mean oh, like, yeah. like yeah, most yeah. of the show you'll see it. Mm. Um, and she will tell me whether or not a show was really good, just good, or not, not as good. And I always say to Claire, if I get one joke that I, I fuck up the punchline or I just – I feel a bit of – like just a bit of death or whatever – I'm also oh, that that was no good. I'm filthy mm-hmm. on myself. You write it off straight away when yeah. no one in the audience would even yeah, know what you were talking it's about. It's good yeah. because you care because yeah, yeah. you want to provide a good product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I find it easier. Which all of you do. Yeah. I find it easier to do big shows. Than I small do too. Shows. I yeah. hate. But I'd much rather have two thousand people than twenty. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know if I could do two thousand, but um, because my background was in musical theatre, I'm used to being on a stage. And <laughs> yep. I'm did you also just say theatre? Theatre. I thought I heard theatre. Get on this <laughs> level. Music theatre. <laughs> I dreamed a dream. No, oh, um, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can walk out because I, I become a character. I don't yep. walk out as Anne. I walk yep. out as. Yeah, and the idiot. That's you put a different hat on, rubber chalk and a ukulele. Um, so it's it's okay. And I used to w- work with dementia people who would heckle me all the time, and I would work with it. So I'm I'm quite happy to have hecklers, and mm-hmm. and they're fun. Mm. They're it's fun. the best part. I know. As long as they provide value to the show. Yeah, it's just when they get repetitive and yeah. you go, oh, that's you're boring, boring now. Yeah. You can go. Yeah. Um, which is what we did last night. But uh, so I provide the the light relief really to what Renata is doing. Relief, and sure. I, I like it when there's a massive big crowd because it's like um, you, you, you can almost hide in it, if you mm. know what I mean. It, mm. it, when it's very sparse, it's very exposed. Mm-hmm. But if there's a big crowd, then it's... Oh, there's, there's that energy yeah. there. And there really Love is it. that feeling like when you walk into a big room, like it's electric, like yeah. it's... Um, it's ter- like it's scary. And like every it, time fun. she walks out and does her stuff, I am in awe mm. of what an amazing entertainer she is. Yeah. Because the shit she comes out with <laughs> is fucking hilarious. Yep. She but is the, so funny. But there are yep. so many comics or entertainers or presenters who are terrified every time they go <laughs> on stage. Who's the one that throws up? Um, I think it's Peter Rosethorn. Someone, but, someone but throws like, up, yeah. Even like Andrew Johns, right, back when he was the best player in the world playing footy, he would throw up before every game. Wow, you know, because there is that much pressure, and you want to pref- you want to do your best every single time. Yeah, yeah. like I, I, yeah. I love shows after I've done them. I hate them before. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. hate it. So yeah. the one we've got one next Wednesday night uh, at the the Wyong Milk Factory, and it's it's only a <laughs> oh shut up. <laughs> Huh? Oh, it's actually, it's they a great place. They wanted us. Thank you they very much. They booked us. Um, yeah, shout cool. out to the Y on Milk and Factory. We're, yes. we're there every month. <laughs> you every do iced coffee. <laughs> yes, they do actually. Ooh. Um, they they have us there um, sort of at this stage of booking us every month except for April because Amazing. we're going to be overseas. Yep. And they're selling out. That's great. Yeah. Incredible. So what are you doing? So you do tarot cards. We've got the, the Chocolate Wheel of Fate. <laughs> Um, which yeah. has tarot cards all around the outside of it. You spin the wheel and um, you get your message. I love that. Um, I know. It's I know. Oh. And, like, people, people write their questions <laughs> and they're going to pop it in a little barrel. We'll pull them out randomly and then we drag When's them out. When's this one? Uh, next Wednesday, which would be the 9th. I think ninth I get a spray tan March. that day. Yeah, that'll be tomorrow. On a trial for the wedding. So, hot question. Yeah. Can yeah. we go? That's what I'm hinting at. Of course you can go. We can go. We go to the Wild Milk Factory. Yeah, I probably, wouldn't we'll, we'll probably be there anyway. <laughs> good well, feed. Just, I was just really I was going to say because I'll have me um, putting uh, getting a tan for the trial for the wedding. I can take me tan out and watch the girls. You're going to whip your tan out? Yes. Oh, I can hardly wait. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 
We want to do a tarot card reading because I've never had one done. Claire's well, never had one done. Is that okay? Did you bring my oracle cards out of your bag? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, good. I had a mini one from Renata last time we hung out, which was pretty cool. Oh. Talking about like kidlets well, and things. Well, let's um, let's. I would Lordy, love another Can you set one. up some cameras? Um, did you want to put it on pause for the people watching this live? Hello, live streamers. How you doing? Hello, live. Oh, we're live. Are yeah, we? We're live. Oh, oh my shit! God. <laughs> should have prepared me for that one. <laughs> Probably should have said something. <laughs> do you want to go to like the the screen or? Follow us, Anne and Renata. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be difficult for people to see, but we'll um, we'll, we'll explain. tell you. You've mm. clipped your bloody headphones in, you lunatic. That's okay because it was all getting all over the place. I'm happy now. I've got extra bits of cable. Let her do her thing. But I'm happy. Okay, so let's talk this through. We're going to do. Uh, is it an exorcism? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay, right. Great. Demons out. Get the Ouija board. I uh, think I want to buy a pink I one. Collect no. them. I've got I know. A pink one. <gasps> we don't need a Ouija board. A Barbie in this house. pink one. Oh, I want one in the background. You in the background, young lady. I, know. I don't want a bloody Ouija board. All right, darling. Oh, oh, a Luigi board. A Luigi. Board. <laughs> Luigi board. So you've got you've got yeah. your own cards here. What are Woo! these? Yeah, these are the frightfully good oracle cards. Of I am now merch merch on the frightfullygood.com site. There we go. Yeah, get it right. Get it in the nice. Lord, do you want to sit in frame? Beautiful. Well done. <laughs> uh, and Renata and I came up with these. We'd like to say we channeled them um, because. So that many sounds good. So that many cards. Does sound good, yeah. A love and light, and your your angels are with you. They will shower you with blessings. Yeah, and that's just bullshit. That's yeah. not helping people. Ain't that people. the truth? That's what like, I want to hear. What tonight. sort of information is that giving people? Yeah. So we came up with blunt cards. Yeah. Uh, so when you're having a tough moment, you'd shuffle up the cards and say, "Just give me some guidance. Pull one out." And sure enough, they'll um they'll say things like, uh, "Oh, let's find a good one." You may want it now, but the universe has different plans. Take a seat and chill out and be fucking patient. Ooh. Love it. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. So do I ask you a question and then you shuffle the cards and you give me a card? Yeah, we'll, we'll shuffle the cards. But Renata reads the tarot. Okay. Which, do you want to explain what yours are? She's got the serious shit. Mm. I just make stuff up. So the, the tarot cards are a system of reading and each card when it was created had a specific meaning attached to it. Uh, and you really can't change that meaning other than there are several different ways that meaning can be processed and brought forward. So even though, for example, the Nine of Cups here mm. is like the good luck card of the tarot deck or I see, it, it. I see it as a good luck card of the tarot deck, yeah, yep. uh, there are many different ways that good luck can turn up. And maybe mm. there's also a bit of information someone requires to know about, well, if this does happen, be careful what you wish for mm. because it may not turn out yeah. exactly how you want it to. Sure. So the way that tarot really works is uh, to inform you about the possibilities that are coming up okay. so that you are forewarned and forearmed and you can make your own decision. So a reader should never tell you what to do, right, because it's taking away your – um, ability to make those choices yourself. It's assuming that you're so dumb that you can't make the choices. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that if everything is the same and nothing changes in your life, the likelihood of A, B or C to happen is this, mm -hmm. right? You make a choice what you want. So people will come in and, for example, ask, you know, how's my love life going to go? This is this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with this person and this is happening and is this going to last? And, you know, you go, well, that's up to you. Exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. up to you. I can say that um, if nothing changes, this is likely to happen, whatever the card comes out, or you could choose this, for example, or this is what's likely to happen in the relationship. So I kind of turn it around so it is always about them making the choice. Mm. I'm only here to deliver the information um, and get you thinking about what is going on in your life. I'm not here to tell you what you need to do and earlier on in my career I had people ringing me up three four five times about oh, what are they going to have for breakfast this morning what are they going to do in the afternoon oh they've got a meeting at night time do they need to go to it and you're going for fuck's sake make your Ring own decisions huh? <laughs> <laughs> don't give your responsibility away to a reader to make these decisions no. for you they can blame you. Yeah. they can blame you if it goes wrong and once again it's this bypassing that oh we're talking about. yeah yeah passing the bucket yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah. what type of questions should we ask? Where, where should we go Hang first? on, did you just pass the bucket and say, what sort of questions should I ask? Yeah, because I don't know what I want. <laughs> 
Um, well, we're trying to work out what burgers to have for dinner at the moment. Oh, That's what we're. I know what I'm having. Well, well look, show off. Let's let's have a look at the type of <laughs> energies that are around you at the moment. Hang on, what do you mean by that? Okay, let's have a look. What energies are around? Are we doing you? Isaac's first? Yeah, we'll do yeah, that. Done. Um, right. Whether whether there are you there know a message from somebody that's good, around you at the moment. Good and profitable energies, or whether there is something that you need to look out for. Okay. God. And people will say, and I understand this, people will say, well, you're very vague. You're very vague. You're just saying shit and it's all vague. When you're talking to someone and you hit on a particular point, they know exactly what you're talking about mm. because they've been thinking about that for the last five weeks, mm. right? So you don't need to explain that you're thinking about Jim who is doing this and that. Mm. They know who you're talking about. So, you know. Take it as it is. So I'm going to actually lay the cards out. Oh, my God. Ooh, we're having a spread. Oh, I want to get a photo. We're this is a like spread. a sh- 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 charterie board. And I, <laughs> Charcuterie. I want you to choose two cards and lay them face down in front of you. Okay. Just thinking about the future to come. And this is where you get worried that you're going to pull the death card or the devil card. I know, that's what I was worried about. What if I pull the death card? And this is also a responsibility thing because I'm not choosing the cards you are. Exactly. Yeah, so if I pull the death card, it's on me. Well, it's your subconscious mind also going, you need to see this for a particular reason. Sure. Yeah. So are we ready for the reveal? Yep. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry. (laughs) Ruin the set, Renata. Are you doing it or I'm doing it? I'll do it. Don't you don't don't, don't you touch. touch my cards. Don't touch your cards. Oh bloody Sorry. hell! Okay, so we have the world card, and the world card is one of those major cards in the major arcana that actually this is very much talking about your new life pattern and where you're going into, where yeah, I, with the marriage and oh, everything that's happening. Indeed. So this is a card that's saying that's you nice. are ready. I'm ready. You are ready for this. Absolutely. Can I can I touch it? Yeah. I'll show the camera. That's uh, the world card. Yeah. Do you want me to take it down? That's good. And you guys better be having bloody babies within the first 12 months. Oh, we're planning. Awesome. We're, we're just keep, keep that's practicing, we're, practicing. That's why we're going to kick you out at 5.30 because it's, cause <laughs> oh, it's I'm, time. I'm ovulating. <laughs> <laughs> what made you think of that? The card. The card, right, okay. I was looking at all these little I thought people. you made you out of vision. I got <laughs> excited. <laughs> See, there's all the little people down there. Aww. So Not that many. we have in the tarot, we have what we call the major arcanas, which are our life points. And these life points are circular. We go around and around and around them throughout our whole life. Mm. And they're steps. So you always move forward. And depending on where you're at and what your issues are, sometimes you get stuck on a life point or sometimes you need to be at that life point to learn your lessons and then you move on to the next one. Mm. And this is kind of the last point of an old life which signals that there is a beginning of a new life that is coming. Right? So you are prepared to close down the old life. You've done everything that you can and that you've wanted to. No more pub. And and you now say... <laughs> you've and, had enough of the piss. You're you, moving on to nappies. You kind Bullshit. Of, <laughs> you kind of now say, okay, I'm ready to get on to the next bit now. This is new adventure. We're starting new. We're starting afresh. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. And I'm going to learn new things because the first card that comes up after that is the... The full card. And you better want to step into the full card, that card of the unknown, that card of I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but this is awesome, mm. so I'm going to go with it. So there's this, there's this thrill of what is to come and that's where you want to be when you see the world card. And so the questions there are what are you closing down, what are you letting go of, what needs to be let go of so that you can progress into this next part of your life. With this fullness of everything, I'm ready for it. Mm. You know, I'm ready for it and I'm accepting. Now the next card here is the Ace of Wands. So the Ace of Wands is a card that kind of eight. You know, eight. eight, sorry, eight. Oh my god, eight. So she's getting the words muddled up sorry. already. As I said, I'm her carer. Yes. <laughs> So the, the Eight of Wands is a card of many commitments and it's a card that says there are, are many things coming up and you have to kind of allow yourself to do all of those bits. And so you have to put some strategies into your life right now that will allow you to be Isaac for this, Isaac for this and Isaac for this. Mm. Uh, and there is also a new contractual agreement coming up for you in the next 12 months as well. So you are going to accept something new. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, you have to be prepared that it's for a fair period of time. 
Yep. And so, again, this is something that you need to look at and be prepared for. But when this comes up, have the strategies in place that allow you to do that and have the freedom to do that. Yeah. There's a bit of turning away from other things as well that are putting you into a line of exposure and too much exposure. So you might find that there are things that you are already doing that you actually want to step away from and go, no, I'm, I'm not there anymore. This has changed me so much. I don't want to do those things. It's, it's not the right thing for me to do right now. So you'll go through, you're going to be a mum, but Hang on to your hats, what happens to him? Oh, there will be some major changes for this guy. What do you mean? Just mentally. What mentally. I, I'm pretty good. Lots, no, you're beautiful. That's lo- why I'm worried. I lots cook dinner. Of, lots of mental changes coming through. And this is where this card comes in, this Eight of Wands, because there will be a just a movement around. It's a beautiful card. It's a card of, of great opportunity and flow, but things will come and take the place of things that are no longer needed or required or or suit your lifestyle anymore. Okay. I'm so intrigued. I know, me too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. So you saw how wonderful and wise Renata is? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I've never doubted it. No, nor have I. Move over. So uh, now it's my (gasps) turn. And once again, these are the... The That's Oracle not even cards. correct shuffling. Oh, I have Leave no idea it how is. to shuffle. I just do this. You're going one go, card underneath. I, I know. <laughs> Got no idea. I'm going to draw the top one and please note that I make this hang up. On, hang on. Is, is the question the same? Oh, why not? And have you got a different one? No, I don't. I'm very <laughs> bad under. We can't even decide what bloody shelves to get in the okay. house, let alone a question about my life. Okay. Well, do I need to shuffle again, or are we happy to go with the top card? Because this how about, is. How about this? I'll, I'll, I'll ask a question. I've okay. got a question. All right. All right. You ask a question, but please no, I make it up. Should I change my career? Oh, my God. Oh, I see. Oh, oh my are, God. We opened up Pandora's box. <gasps> mm. All right. <gasps> yes. The angels have your back, but you don't. So you need to stand up for yourself. Mm. So if you are feeling that you need a change, oh. it's because you, you're um, not standing up, you're not speaking your truth, but you normally do. But there is something going on in the background that you're not happy with mm-hmm. and it is time. <laughs> it's, oh. it's time for you to go, you know what, motherfuckers? I'm not happy with that. And you will have the backing of the angels to look after you. So this is an up-leveling. It's not necessarily a, a, a downscaling. It's an up-leveling. But like I said, you have to have the procedures in place for when you do that. Yeah, so I don't know. I I know what you're saying. What was your question? Can you say what that was? Like, can you? No, I said it before. I said, should I change, should I change career? Oh, <laughs> don't worry. No, but I. Poor sh- microphone levels. Sh- Shane, this is live. Claire's a dipshit. <laughs> That's the, that's the episode. Po- that's the name of the podcast. Uh, the episode. Um, no, I, I, I just, I think, I think we're we're doing well. I think you you're doing, doing well. well. Yeah. You're doing fantastically well. And you've jinxed it. Damn it! There must no, be something else coming up. There is. Oh Jesus! There is. It, it's it's not known yet because you haven't done that process of moving into that next stage yet. Mm. Okay. Are you sensing something? No. I feel like yeah, but, but it's it's coming. It's coming. I reckon it'll be a, a really huge 12 months for you, for you both. Is it a contract in having a baby? Because that's what we've been talking about. Well, the co- a marriage is a contract. Yes, marriage it is. is. Oh. You better sign it. You bring that fucking biro and you... Pssst. We paid for the bloody wedding. I'll be signing it. Don't worry about that. We're thinking about, on the completely off topic, we're thinking about, we're getting married in July. We're thinking about getting married again. I don't know if in it's Vegas. bad luck, but in Vegas, like oh. a few weeks later. Oh, I'd love it. Wow. I think that's amazing. That awesome. Like a shotgun wedding. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 I really want a small wedding and we're not doing that now. So I can't. I'm sorry. It's all right. So we're, I'm thinking leather. The jackets, a little dress. Go out with a go oh, out with a bang. I, yeah. I want you to go out with a huge baby bump as well with yeah. the photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on it at the moment. No, 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 no. But for your Vegas wedding, yeah, so that you're dressing oh, yeah. up. So That'd like it's funny. a shotgun wedding. I love that. I'll put a pillow under my skirt. Do it. <laughs> I don't know why I even stopped. Would you like to do Claire? Uh, I have a question. Yeah, oh, I'd sure. love to do Claire. Oh, God. Stop it. <laughs> God. Okay. Everyone do I think it or say it out loud? What did that no. dude say in the comment yesterday? He said, oh, I want to meet Claire's mum. Oh, oh no, you don't. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum is beautiful. She is beautiful. <laughs> um, I think just hold on to this question for the moment. 
much. Okay. Until, until you until you get some responses here and see if they fit. Okay. okay. Yeah, but then how are we going to know what the? Um, Will I say if it's well, right or not? But is it a personal question or is she it might just change a, it's a personal question? Yeah. Well, don't say and it it's on, not to do with babies. Don't say yeah. it in front of all I, these I freaks. Don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think keep it personal. Okay. Keep it personal. Um, and choose one <clears throat> card. Okay. You're on the discounted rate. You get one. That's fair. It is my podcast. <laughs> exactly. I'm just. I'm just <laughs> a guess. It's yeah. all about you Isaac. Can't flip it over. Okay. Renata's got to flip it. I've yep. got to flip it. Otherwise, it changes into the death card. That's right. Shh. Shit, I better have a look at it. Oh, no, it's all good. It's all good. Is there a death card in there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Death, uh, devil. It's, but they're not, they're not the, the cards you need to worry about. Yeah. What's the card you need to worry about? The tower. The tower card. What's the tower card mean? The tower card is all about ego and oh, about I'm how- I'm shocked I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> how ego can be the ruin Ooh. of everything. Okay. Yeah. We're seeing it right now. Here's the tower card. <laughs> You have the Ten of Coins, my girl. It is a beautiful card, absolutely beautiful. It's the oh. penultimate card of the coins, and this is about oh, what are you going to be doing next year, my sweet? That's what I want to know if you want to have a look at that one. It doesn't show anything about death. No, it doesn't show anything about death. But this is a, a card that sees you all over the place. Uh, in the next 12 months and earning your own coin, earning your own money, having your own stash. Foot and, picks. And, and being able, <laughs> uh, what is it, what are those pages they call, they call them, um, for 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 you only or something? Only fans. fans. Only fans, fans page. Only you know, do your that. fans only page. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready, boys. <laughs> Woo! I'm not sticks. responsible for what she's saying. I'm just. I'm kidding. <laughs> Go on. But this is a card of um, pussy pigs. No, <laughs> no one wants that. No, it's 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 a financial card. So it's a card of money coming to you hey. and uh, your ability to finance the things that you want to do and to look after what you want um, in a very very personal way. So this is a real empowerment card. If you have felt that you have been in the shadows for too long. No, 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 no. Claire is never in the no, shadow. No, I'm the first. Not. I'm the first lady. No, no. You are going to hold not. your own. That's what I, you're I'm. Do. I am. I'm in the. I'm not in the shadow, but I'm. I'm the offsider. You do own. You do hold your own. Yeah, I hold my own, but I'm the offsider. Yeah. In a nice way. No, you're right. Feminists I come at me. I am the fucking. No, but I am the yeah. main mule. Well, look, there's all these <laughs> celebrities, and they all have a little missus behind them, and that's me. I just happen to laugh a lot. No, but you're 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 the second channel's all about you. It's, not, it's nice to have some people that Everyone like hates me on that channel. They love no, they you. Don't. They don't. <clears throat> they go, this <laughs> fucking bunny. It's very nice to be liked after high school. <laughs> yeah, fair. It's I, rare. I'm Look, still waiting. I do, yeah. I do want to give you um, some really good information, though, from this card. It's a really beautiful card to get but it, because it's, it very much says that a lot of your dreams are coming through true over the next 12 months. Yep. And because it's a financial card, it builds into it safety and security and a feeling that you are going to be looked after and everything's going to be fine. And you're going to be in this go- really goddamn beautiful, awesome space. So, you know, when wow. there are some cards that come through that there's just re- – it's really hard to find something really bad to say about it other than you are going to be stretched a lot and, you know, maybe really? there will be <laughs> – in more ways than one. I should have said that. That was a bad yeah. choice of words. It's called baby's uh, head. But, uh, but you, oh, well, you uh, may yeah, also okay. have to put some things in place so that um, you can just enjoy and rest and relax as well. So this is a real time of thinking over the next 12 months that you guys can't just do everything anymore. You're going to need assistance. You've got to outsource. You've got to outsource. Mm. Yeah. If you want to grow bigger, you're going to have to outsource. I don't know what to make of any of that. My What's God. Your card? Did it answer your question whatsoever? No, but know. it was good. Yeah, so you got what you needed to hear. Maybe. I was thinking real doom and gloom. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. No, I'm just saying. No, I was that. I was thinking real morbid stuff and that had nothing to do with that. Just so that's that the, nice. the takeaway joint we're going to do tonight and was closed. Yes. <laughs> and you mustn't think morbid because it, it does bring things closer when you think about them in that way. Mm. Yep. So. I worry about that. Energy can breed energy. and you've I've definitely got, got a careful. death complex. 
I worry all the time about people dying that are close to me. We always all die. have. Everybody I know. dies. I think that's a very common thing, though. It's yeah. not, it's not I just think about you. it all the time, though. Mm. I'm always worried about it. I hate people getting older, yeah. relatives and stuff, and I'm just like, fuck. I think some people have just a better way of not thinking about it. I can't not think about it. As I'm getting older, it gets worse. But that's just a part of anxiety is there's things that yeah. you constantly – um, think about and have you know these ruminating thoughts, and we all have those about different things. And for whatever reason, yours happens to be sometimes about people passing away because it's a horrible thought. And that that's a sign of um, insanity. No, oh. it's 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 not it's not good to keep thinking about that. But it is is it's a sign of someone that is deep because they are looking at the fact that um, we are not immortal, we are mortal, uh, and it should spurn you on to do better things and happier mm. things in your life mm. because you know you're going to die. You're not going to live forever. Mm. Yeah. That's so a it's, good answer. It's a good thing yeah. as long as you don't continually brood in that. Yeah. It's not so much not me dying, it's more other people dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Not to bring it down, guys, sorry. But yeah. yeah. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Like for my therapy sessions. If you're happy and you know. Oh, no, sorry. Like so you've got to um, you've got to pick one of Anne's cards. All right, now. Oh, I'll do a different question. Right, different question. Um, can we going to shuffle? I, you, I know. I want you to select one. I want you to pick. Uh, ask a question about yourself, not the outside world. Ask something for yourself. Get it. Oh, you're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, it's it's see this is she's gotta choose a card now, she's gonna freak out. <laughs> Dead air, nothing like it. Oh, no, do I say one. it out loud? Not that one. <laughs> oh god <laughs> I always do that to people. Jesus they're Christ! About, they're about to argue, not that one. <laughs> do I say my question? Yeah, so what's your question? Oh, I forgot it now. <laughs> it's riveting. Totally riveting. You can go with my question. Nah, what was yours? About the career. No. Oh, Isaac right. asked about anal. <laughs> 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 Poor dad. I needed to know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, if you're not sure, what maybe the people who have passed over, if they were going to give you a message right now, your your spirit family, mm. what would that message they're going to give you, right? So mm. just think that in your head and choose a card. Oh, they're going to swear. I know. I'm waiting for <laughs> it. All right. Oh, she's gone deep. Oh, she's gone deep. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is what came out last night. <laughs> um, I, I don't know how this fits for you, but maybe it does. Okay, the card is think twice, speak once. Sometimes you need to just shut the fuck up. That's so true. <laughs> All right, sometimes you just let your mouth go ahead of you yep. a little too quickly yep. and you just need to go, hang on, I, I let me think mm. through that comment before I say it out loud she because um, this could be awkward. Do you, Do you think what that, you say? Thank you, darling. <laughs> Do you think that card was meant for me? <laughs> no, it just came up for our troll last night. I oh, remember yeah. when yes. you were saying that. I was like, "Didn't wasn't this? Yeah, I watched yeah. it last night. Right. So yeah. they were going on and on and on. I said, oh. we're going to pull a card for you, lovely. Obviously, you're having a really love life, li- uh, hard life, oh. um, and that's what it came with. Sometimes oh, I you don't just like need to shut the fuck up. It makes up. me sound like a bitch. No, no, it's it's saying to you think before you speak. That's all it is. Oh no, those eyes are looking very. Um, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I want to finish off. To, and I've really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having us. I want to so ask fun. one more question. No, I've got two. No, let's wrap it up. Three, four, five. One question. <laughs> yeah. Why is it always people seeing ghosts from the 1800s? Uh-huh. Why is no one, why does no one have a velociraptor in their bedroom in the middle I of the night? I asked this, didn't yep. I? You did. I asked this. I said, why aren't there any velociraptor? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got an answer for him? Um. I think that time is the interesting thing that is happening here and how we understand time is different to how time really works. And because we don't really – and velociraptors are things that happened thousands and thousands of years ago and we don't have a beloved velociraptor that we keep talking about – Jimmy the Velociraptor. I'm so sorry that mm. he's dead now, and you know, and you bring Rip. that energy back. Yeah, um, that it that energy is no longer here sure. to 
for, for us to engage with. Uh, and in saying that, there are time slips and people do go back in time, even if it is just for a, a few minutes or seconds, seconds, and they experience things. Um, but we tend to find that we have people who talk about ghosts that are either relative to them um, or relative to the last couple of hundred years at the most and if they are old spirits they're spirits that have been talked about all the time and so we're dredging up that that connection we're we dredging keep them. up we the, keep it yeah, alive. the memory and we are keeping them here okay yeah and so like a lot of uh, famous haunted locations, people are retelling those stories over and over and over. Uh, generations of families will tell the story of uncle whoever it was. So those memories or that energy is kept alive by that. It's almost like that Disney movie with the um, when they, they don't put the picture of the person up on the mantle and they're forgotten. And they mm. fade in yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Disney one. Yeah. Um, it, it, that, well, that's only our... our um, Take on it is yeah. that uh, the nobody's putting energy into that specific entity identity, so therefore they fade. And some cultures don't speak of the dead, and that's because they want that spirit to go and rest in peace. Mm. So they can get quite offended that some people do talk about the dead and literally bring them back into our world. We're when- a bit like that. Like we're super different with. Yeah, well, Claire, we were talking about this yesterday, like with um, de- you go. Well, Claire's yeah. family goes and visits graves constantly, and all yeah. of our family stuff. members, not just randoms. Yeah. Claire goes to visit all these. Actually, people. I did used to go and talk to one when I was little. Did you? I, I used to say hello to her because there was a little girl's grave, and I think the family might have been poor because they hand wrote <laughs> in the concrete her name because she didn't have a proper stone. Aww. So when I was a kid, I used to put some of Grand's flowers, Dee's flowers. Onto hers because mm. I felt oh, sorry for her. That's beautiful. beautiful it's very sad. That's beautiful. Yeah. She's still. I think her name was Anna or Ian. Oh, there you yeah. go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, you know, my family, we don't visit graves. We don't do those type of things. Like it's and you're dead. You're forgotten in the Butterfield House. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dead and gone. It's very weird. And sometimes you don't have to die, and you're no. Forgotten. Yeah, you're just <laughs> forgotten anyway. It's true. It's a very different sort of. Um, yeah. Yeah. You but know, the reason look at it. the reason why you do that is for you. Yeah. It's not for them. Mm. Mm. That's that's something that gives you peace of mind and you guys don't feel the need to do that to have mm. peace of mind. Mm. So it's your culture. Mm. Yeah, different cultures in there. Mm. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that. Where can people find you guys? Well, Toot your horn. All right, we're on YouTube. Please come and join YouTube with us. Join and YouTube. YouTube. With us. Are you sure you- you're not sixty? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Come and join YouTube. Yeah. Come and subscribe. Yep. Like, hit the bells. How's that? Is that better? Well Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks, Uncle Isaac. Uh, and Thanks, Anne Daddy. and Renata, uh, ghost hunters. We're on Facebook as Anne and Renata. Frightfully good. We have our community page as well, which you're welcome to join. Don't forget True Hauntings podcast. It is going like the clappers and. And as of today, we can announce we've got a second one, which is called Spooky Sundays. Woo! So well that's done. our radio show. Take yep. it over, Renata. What's that? Mm, yeah, so our radio show, uh, we have been running since about June, July last year. Yep. Uh, and that can be seen live on Newcastle Live Radio mm. between 8 and 10 every Sunday evening. But now it's actually running as a podcast. So they've started with our earliest um, episodes and they are putting them up on Spotify and iTunes as well for people cool. to listen to. Cool. So there's two podcasts. Yep. Yep. And uh, you can buy paranormal equipment from ozparatech.com. Yep, I looked there today at your teddy. Yes, yes, the Boo Junior. We're, uh, we're, we're considering one for the background. Oh. Oh, mm. nice. Oh. Yes. yes. Check it out, guys. It's and very cool. If you want to do a ghost tour with us, newcastleghosttours.com.au. Did I get that, that right? That is correct. All right, there we Bravo. go. Bravo. Well done. Thank you very much, Anne. Oh, Renata. thank you. It's thank been you, awesome. Little Dixon. Thank well done. You. Thanks for having us. Great Mother, podcast, Mother young be. ladies. and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Peace, Middle East, big stings. Bye bye. Bye. I hear chat the noise. too quick, can't stop for the talking.